the new Hero 10 GoPro camera. It's got a screen on the front. I can see myself now when I'm talking to you. That is neat. Ha! I like it. So good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday morning here. I'm filming on my, my new camera. It's a little bigger than the GoPro Hero 8. I've got the other one down here charging. This one doesn't have a screen on the front, eh? It's just a LCD or a, just a display to show, show me how many minutes I've been recording. This one, actually, I can see myself. That's very interesting. Anyways, enough about that. So we just got here to work. We're not too sure what we got on the agenda yet, but we're gonna figure it out soon. Tomorrow uh, is a day off. It's Remembrance Day here in Canada, so this is a little bit in the past for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And then Friday we're back to work and then we have the weekend off. It'd be kind of nice if it would have been uh, on Friday. Then we would have had a long weekend, but oh well. We'll take it. Oh, that is, that is nice, yeah. That's nice. I can actually make sure that I'm centered in the shot and I don't have like the camera too low or too high. Sometimes I have to get rid of footage with my other camera because I had it pointed at the wrong direction. Much better. Yes, I can see myself. Now I can talk to somebody. I mean, it's myself, but I can see myself there, so now I'm talking to me. It's like I'm actually talking to a real person because I'm a real person. So if I'm on the screen there, I'm also here. It's way too early for this. All right, put the seatbelt on to roll across the yard because you don't want to fall out. Go over there and figure out what they got for me. Yeah, cool. It's gonna be a good day. Have you told yourself yet? Stop and tell yourself right now. Today is gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good day. I don't care what you say, it's gonna be a good day. I'll say it for you. Your day is gonna be a good day. There. See? Someone's gotta say it. Now I'm going to try filming in 4K, 120 frames per second on this camera today. I'll be using this other one too a little bit. I believe that one's 4K, 60 frames per second. The reason I haven't done 4K in the past and uh, why I might be going back to 2.7K is because the laptop I'm using at home, my Asus computer, can't always handle the 4K footage and it's very hard to edit because it gets all choppy. So uh, I'll see how my computer handles this day. And uh, I'd like to continue in higher definition footage because it makes for better content, right? And, uh, we'll see, I need to get a new computer. But I don't want just any computer. I want to make sure I pick the one that I want, the best one. And the one that I want is like a few thousand dollars. I want a desktop and I want uh, I don't want to skimp on that because I use it every day. I use it so much, I, I want the best of the best. Just like this GoPro I'm using now is the best of the best. It was a gift and I'm very thankful for it. But the laptop I'm gonna get myself. I want to do that myself. And uh, that'll be when we have the money for it. For now, my, my laptop does just fine. It's just fine. Might be a little choppy while I'm editing it, but it'll turn out good in the, in the end. We'll see what happens starting to rain. Today there's supposed to be a big snowstorm rolling in. It's going to start as rain throughout the day and hopefully by the time I'm done work, hopefully it'll wait till then, it's supposed to start snowing tonight. The first real snowfall of the year. This is supposed to bring in about a foot of snow or 25 centimeters or so, up to a foot of snow, maybe not that much, but up to. So it's bound to happen sooner or later. And like I said yesterday, bring it on Manitoba. This is what I was born for. This is what this is what we do. This is what Manitobans do. We're ready for it. Come on, let's get it over with. Give me your best shot, Mother Nature. Let's see what you got. Try to try to impress me, all right? It takes quite a bit to impress a Manitoban when it comes to snow in winter. So, if you can impress a Manitoban with your with your amount of snow and your cold weather, you know you did a good job. We'll see what we'll see what Mother Nature comes up with. Off we go. We have a step deck in tow. 53-foot step triaxle behind me. I've got a riser on the kick up there just in case. 
Apparently where this trailer is going, it's gonna need one. I'm picking up freight in uh, the St. James area of Winnipeg on Aaron Street, which is the opposite of Wall Street. Yes, we have a Wall Street in Winnipeg. It's not quite as glamorous as New York Wall Street, but it's our own little Wall Street, yeah. It has nothing to do with finances, it's just a road. It's a one-way road going through a commercial district. We're gonna go pick up some freight there. Uh, we have two loads to pick up there today and that's uh, it's my job to go and get them. It's probably about a half hour, 45 minute ride to where we gotta pick them up. gonna wait for that pickup to come past me and then I'll get into the right lane there. Come on, buddy. Come on, you got a Chevy, step on it. Come on, I want my lane back. There you go. Wunderbar. Let's go get our freight. This is Aaron Street, it runs south, it's a one way. Wall Street runs the other way there. It looks exactly like this. So, so if you look at the map of Canada here, this is where we're at. Right in the city of Winnipeg. Let's look at it from the top view. There we go, see the perimeter going around Winnipeg there, that's what I'm always talking about. And we are close to the airport on Aaron Street. Right there. And then yeah, Wall Street runs that way. Now let's go get our freight. It's right over here somewhere. Just gotta figure out where they want me. I don't wanna pull in there. It's a very tight neighborhood here and high traffic. I don't wanna mess this up. I'm gonna go figure out where they want me first. All right, so this happens every now and then. Uh, we got the wrong address. Whoops. And it's not like it's just down the street, you know? Like, oh shoot, I'm sorry, I got the wrong building. Let me just walk next door. No, the place I'm supposed to pick up at is on the other side of the city. Nobody's fault really because the business has their location and phone number listed as being here. There's no record of them on the internet anywhere being anywhere but here. And apparently from what these guys said, it's the same owner that owns this and that. So I guess Google just must have uh, mixed things up for them. Uh, they'll probably have to call into Google to get that fixed if, if they feel like it. At least for next time, I know that Google's wrong. So, uh, Google, you lied to me. Strike one. Okay, because Google never lies. Never. It always tells the truth every time. Right? Strike one, Google. Three strikes and you're out the window. Karen, you're already on strike two. Don't even start with me. Oh, my lunch is falling over over here. Okay. I'm gonna have to find a bathroom here somewhere. This trucker's coffee went right through him. Anyone want to let a trucker use their bathroom? Where am I going to go? I'm like way in the middle of the city. There's going to be no bathrooms here. <sighs> trucker life, right? All right, I just spent like 10 minutes talking to nobody. The camera wasn't even recording up there. So what I was saying is <laughs> It's a 15 minute drive to where we actually have to be. Google cannot be trusted. That is strike one for Google. Karen, don't even start with me, you're on strike two. Once you hit strike three, they're out the window. So apparently uh, the shipper, the company, the owner owns both companies and I guess Google just put both of their addresses at this address here on Aaron Street. And uh, the location where I'm picking up from is actually on the other side of the city. And no one had that address on them uh, until we realized that that's not the correct address over here. So that happens, we try to avoid that, but what can you do? Stuff like that happens, you get the wrong address, uh, you fix it. And we try our best to next time 
not let that happen, right? Now I'll remember where the shipper is if I ever pick up there again. I need to get out of this lane. This lane ends. All right, buddy. Give her. I think this is a cop coming up here. Unmarked vehicle. Or used to be anyways. It's a police interceptor. There we go, I had to be in this lane. So we're headed up Route 90 right now. We went all the way around. I was talking to you guys the whole time. It would have been a great shot. We were going around on Portage Avenue there. So I've got to find a place to go to the bathroom. This trucker needs the bathroom. This, the trucker coffee that I had this morning is gonna make another appearance and I need a uh, facility. Now we gotta find a place that lets truckers in. So I'm gonna go, like I said, the Petropass truck stop. It's a truck stop. You have to let truckers into the truck stop. Otherwise, what's the point of having a truck stop? Then you're just a stop. You're not even a stop. Then you're just a building. No one wants to go there. And then I'll just go around and uh, it's on the northeast side of the city. We're on the northwest side right now. That's not too far away. It's not like we're way, like across Chicago. Uh, this is Winnipeg. It's a bit of a smaller city. When stuff like this happens, it's a little easier and quicker to fix it. That was an honest mistake. The road up here is so much smoother now that they've uh, actually fixed it. This used to be so bumpy. This is like Trucker Central in Winnipeg. You got Volvo, you got Mac, you got Western Star coming up there. You got Andy the Kenworth guy sitting at Inland Kenworth just up on our right. Uh, you got the Freightliner dealership off just to the left over there, the big dealership just off this road. You got Peterbilt just down the road. Anything to do with trucking is on Brookside Boulevard here, or Route 90 in Winnipeg, north side of the city. A lot of trucking companies based up here as well, because there's also a lot of mechanic shops, and all the dealers are here, so it's it makes sense, I guess, because it's a short it's a short tow for them if they need to bring their trucks in for any repairs, you know. There's another one over there, a bunch of red trucks. I'm not too sure what company that is, but. Trucks, trucks, trucks. I remember visiting this area of the city many, many times when I was a kid with my dad. Oh, it's Oak Point Highway, sorry, not Brookside. Oak Point Highway, it changes names quite a bit. Here's Andy the Kenworth guy, Inland Kenworth. You guys wanna buy a Kenworth, go talk to Andy. He's a good guy, I like him. Looks like he's at work today. There's his vehicle. And here's the Petro Pass. Okay, we need to use the bathroom. This is borderline emergency. Oh, that car is gonna block my way, of course. Of course, how am I supposed to get in there with that car there? Let's see if they'll uh, figure it out. No, they're not gonna figure it out. Excuse me, there you go. Thank you, I appreciate it. Not his fault, they built this a little bit tight. Thanks, bud. Yeesh. All right. What's this guy doing? fuel up anyways, come to think of it. I am sitting at just above a quarter tank. Let's get it done while we're here. Kill two birds with one stone. Look at that Peterbilt over there, you see that? Nice truck, very nice. Air ride front suspension, he's got that bumper pretty much sitting on the ground. That's beautiful. All right, sweet relief. Okay, let's go. I wanna get both of these loads picked up, hopefully before it starts snowing. It's a nice little day cab here too. Nice and clean. Ah, uh, the snow is gonna be here soon. My dad is uh, west of us where the weather is coming from, near Saskatoon. 
and it's already getting bad there he said and that's all coming this way it's supposed to hit us around three o'clock uh, unless if that's changed already and then get really bad tomorrow I think we're gonna get a green light here right away come on come on green light what's going on well I can make a right turn on red so my trailer makes it around there there we go beautiful Let's rock and roll it's starting to drizzle a little bit it was a little bit this morning already when I showed you it sort of stopped for the day but you can sort of sense it in there you can feel it and you can also tell by uh, the clouds you can tell by the way that they are that they're uh, bringing snow I'm actually excited for it you know what bring it on bring on winter you know we had a good summer bring on winter stay in that lane there my buddy see trucks all the time with two guys in there driving team that's one thing I, I was never interested in doing I find it very hard to fall asleep in the sleeper when the truck is moving plus a truck is a very small space already I like that space to all be mine that guy went through a solid red light that gravel truck over there you see that yeah I like everything in the truck to be mine I don't like to share it Here's Peterbilt, that's what I was telling you about before. But they got no trucks on their lot. This is usually packed full of trucks. That freaks me out. We were talking about this the other day, how car dealerships, truck dealerships, there's shortages of parts and microchips and stuff. It's so scary to see everyone's lots empty. It's gonna really start increasing the value of used trucks, old trucks like this, because new trucks are gonna be harder to come by. If they don't catch up. It's got to turn right onto Washington Avenue here. All my American viewers will be happy with that. Washington Avenue and take the next right onto Washington Avenue. Then your destination will be on the right. Yeah, they're gonna have to button hook this a little bit. There is a Washington Avenue in Winnipeg, Manitoba. What do you know? Wunderbar. Okay, so uh, this is uh, this is my spot. I'm gonna load up here and uh, we'll see you guys after. I'm gonna quickly rush back, drop it off, and come grab my second one. It's starting to rain a little bit. I don't want to start snowing. Not till I'm done. But we'll see what happens. And now the snow has started to fall. Just finished loading up the first load. I've got to bring this back to the yard and then. Uh, come get the second load yet hopefully the snow is mostly gonna hold off till 3 p.m. like they said the, it's noon right now three o'clock would be all right I should be done strapping down my second one around then hopefully all right let's buckle ourselves in before we get on the road this thing always falls in there there we go all right I'm gonna try to get around this tight corner Air hasn't filled all the way up yet. Come on. I'm just gonna pull off to the side here and then let my air fill up. I had to get out of their way there in the yard. There we go. Okay. Alright, one second here. Let's get this 
air fill you know I'm gonna go ahead there between the fire hydrants beeping is getting annoying what's going on why isn't it filling up okay don't want to block those fire hydrants all right come on air so what happens is when I load freight very often what I'll do is I'll drop the truck and trailer airbags so that the truck and trailer doesn't shake around while they're loading it and then when I start the truck up I've got to put air back into the system it's got to lift the whole truck up but this time it takes a lot more air pressure because I'm loaded even though this isn't that heavy a freight it's taking a little longer than I thought it would and I had to get out of their yard there's two trucks crowding in there already that didn't want to wait their turn and they wanted me out of their yard. Whatever. I'm just gonna wait here for the air to fully fill up. For some reason or another, it's just taking a little longer than I thought it would. I'm just waiting for the psh sound of the blow off valve. Almost there. Hi. there there it is you hear it just make sure it's holding my air gauges are right here okay so we're good didn't have much of a choice but to stop here oh that's why he uh gave me the little honk <laughs> i thought i had my four ways on i just had my left turn signal on he was probably just honking to let me know he's coming around my left side with that was my bad. I thought it was my four ways. Okay. You guys ready? Winter trucking today. Well, not quite. It's still melting once it hits the road. So it's not quite winter trucking, but it's on the way. Let's get back onto Raleigh Street here. just like this one and we're gonna get it done as quick as we can so I'll talk to you guys after well I got a little excited with this new camera that I'm filming on right now and I filmed way too much for one vlog so we're gonna make it into two vlogs I didn't film the next day anyways because the next day was Remembrance Day and uh, as you know around the world, at least in the Western world, uh, that is a day, whether it be called Remembrance Day or Veterans Day down in the US, when we honor the, the troops who fell. We remember when the guns fell silent in the Great War. We remember World War II, and we remember all the wars since then. It seems that uh, they just keep coming, you know? Wherever evil lifts its head in the world, uh, we'll be there to confront it. That's a difficult thing to think about, too, because in my lifetime, my parents' lifetime, and even my grandparents' lifetime, we've lived through a, a reasonably peaceful period of world history. And we hope to continue that on for our children and grandchildren. There have been wars here and there, but uh, when in comparison to the great wars before, they are, they are a little smaller, though they are, they are still significant, and many people have fought and died there as well. So we remember them, too. Anyways... If you're serving, thank you very much for your service. I'm going to continue this vlog tomorrow and make it into a two-part video. I'll see you then.